say. I've been here since September um, and really enjoyed getting to know you all and, and working with many clubs across the country um, on their development plans. I'm going to have you on listen only for this session. So if you'd like to ask a question at any time, go ahead and enter it in the chat box and I'll address it um, within the flow of the presentation as soon as I can. Um, the sessions are being recorded as all of our sessions are and you'll be able to refer to it at any time and share the link with any others that might be interested. I'm assuming you can all hear me okay, unless I see something show up in the chat box uh, to tell me otherwise. So as you probably know already, we run a lot of workshops during the year and um, the workshops now are really aligned with uh, our in process club excellent guide and areas that are addressed in the certification assessment process. There are eight areas of performance that we have clubs go through a rigorous self assessment self assessment process when they engage in certification. And so these presentations follow that um, they cover leadership and governance, finance and funding, fostering club culture, PR marketing and communications, human resources athlete and child safety, USSA club programming, USSA club logistics. And then sometimes we'll do a continued um, look into some of those areas. For example, in February, we did a program and assessment and measuring outcomes presentation, uh, which falls under leadership and governance, as well as this month, uh, strategic planning, which also falls under leadership and governance. Um, as you hopefully know, we're here to support you. You're our greatest asset and available with myself and a team of club consultants and experts to support you in any of these areas as you're going through organizational assessment and performance. So please don't ever hesitate to reach out to us. So we're gonna talk a little bit about club leadership and governance principles. We, um, our whole development platform is based on principles and practices. Principles in general are the good ideas or good values stated in a context independent manner. They're very general and broad reaching um, in line with your vision and goals. Practices are the application of these principles and they're stated in a very context dependent way. So the principles are the overarching themes and um, excellent values in all of these areas of performance that we talk about. So for club leadership, these are the overarching principles. Mission, vision, values, and goals objectives are clearly understood by all internally and externally. Culture of the organization is purposefully created and not left to chance. Staff leadership is carefully hired, supported, and regularly evaluated. The organization has clear, short, and long-term strategic plans. Appropriate financial and human resources to fulfill the mission. A leadership evaluates its own and the organization's performance, and the organization operates according to clear policies and procedures. And as you know, today we're going to talk about the short and long term strategic planning and what that looks like and how you can be um, your best self under that principle. So, everybody's heard the term strategic plan. A lot of people don't really understand what it means. It can be a very, very um, long, complicated, well-established plan that fills a whole binder, or it can be a single page. And we're gonna look today at sort of what that um, spectrum can look like and where you might wanna fall into it in your planning processes. So what is a strategic plan? Basically, it's an organizational management activity that's used to set priorities focus energy and resources, strengthen operations, ensure that employees and other stakeholders are working toward common goals, establish agreement around intended outcomes results, assess and adjust the organization's direction in response to a changing environment. It's a disciplined effort that produces fundamental decisions and actions that shape and guide what an organization is, who it serves, what it does, why it does it, with a focus on the future. You don't know how many times I get calls from clubs saying we are just not functioning in a healthy way. There's discord, there's disagreement. Uh, some people feel we should do something one way, others feel we should do it another way. There's a lot of divisiveness. 
And ultimately, when I back up and look at the history of these organizations, they've had strong, strong leadership, with very clear vision, but it hasn't necessarily been agreed upon internally and externally, and there hasn't been a consensus built around it. And with a strong leader, you can get away with that often for quite a long time if they've got a big following and they're charismatic and dynamic and accomplished and all those things. But quite often you'll find it's not sustainable. And when you do the process of a strategic plan, you come out with a stronger organization and a strong consensus. And it's, it's dynamic, it's not static. So you can't just say, oh, it's done. We're gonna be healthy for 20 years. But it's a starting point for you to continue to make sure everybody's in alignment and to have a good platform of discussion if, if you're finding they're not. So why have a strategic plan? Some of the things I just touched on. It's assurance that your club remains relevant and responsive to the needs of the community, that you're contributing to the the plan, sorry, contributes to organizational stability and growth, provides a basis for monitoring progress and assessing results and impact. How are you doing? Sometimes how, you don't know if you're not tracking on that. A plan will enable an organization to look into the future in an orderly and systematic way rather than just going on instinct and intuition. And from a governance perspective, it enables the board to set policies and goals to guide the organization and provides a clear focus to the executive director and staff for program implementation. So one of the first things you'll need to do as an organization is, is really talk about and put it out there and agree on a strategic planning process. You want to make sure everybody has an understanding of what it is and how it's done. Make sure all your stakeholders understand the potential value in terms of providing a common vision and focus with agreed upon goals and strategies. Again, it's hard to get there sometimes, but once you're there, you'll find that um, things will function a lot more effectively, efficiently, and your mission impact will be greater and morale will be higher. Make sure you consider the cost in terms of board and staff time. Uh, again, it's going to depend on how, you know, if you're doing short term planning, long term planning, which is more synonymous with strategic planning. Um, if you want to keep it really simple to start, or if you have a basis and you want to really expand on it, um, make sure you're aware of the time and everybody involved is aware of the time. Consider if the organization's ready for a long range plan or if it's better to focus on a short term plan. Um, You'll find if, if, you're, if you don't have a plan in place, you're experiencing stressors, um, some conflict, uh, not clear direction, not everybody's on the same page. I'm working with some clubs who are actually better off advised to, to develop a one-year plan. And really it's a plan of, um, you'll go through a lot of the motions that we're gonna go through to develop a strategic plan, but it's a plan that will address those issues stabilize things, start to get everybody on the same page before you proceed with an actual plan. When you get to the point where strategic planning seems appropriate, you wanna agree on the process and establish responsibilities for the steps, including at least one day devoted to a board and staff planning retreat. It can be all staff or senior staff, but it's really up to you, whatever you think is gonna be most effective and how large your staff is, and then a series of planning meetings. Um, Again, it's, this is a board staff joint process. Um, it needs to have everybody on the same page, everybody working toward the same desired outcomes. Um, I, I work with a lot of clubs who, one of the very starting points is to ask the question, what does success look like? And you'd be surprised at all the different answers. For some clubs, success looks like um, placing an athlete on a U.S. ski team or placing an athlete on a NCAA Division One. For some clubs, it is introducing as many student athletes as possible to the sport of skiing and developing a lifelong love of the sport. So it really runs the gamut. And if you are not all in agreement of what success looks like in your club, um, you have got to get there before you can move forward. So the do's and don'ts of strategic planning. Do engage a broad-based group in the strategic planning process. It can't be that one strong leader saying, this is where we are, this is where we wanna be, and this is how we're going to get there. Again, you're gonna need buy-in from a group, the broad-based group. 
part of the process is taking the time to understand your values and developing clear vision and mission statements. And we're going to get into that a little bit more, um, the hows and the whys. You're going to want to address all four elements of the SWOT analysis, weaknesses and threats, as well as strengths and opportunities. And we're going to go over that as well. And then you're going to use that analysis to set priorities, objectives, goals, action plans, and performance measures. Don't take a solely top-down approach to strategic planning. Um, it, it doesn't work. It's proven to fail. As I said, if you have a strong leader or leadership team, it may work for a while. Uh, it is not a sustainable model. Avoid overlooking intangibles such as company culture or quality of management when you're accessing strengths. And when we go over the SWOT analysis, just remember that it's your culture can be a strength. Your quality of management can be a strength. It can also be a weakness. And don't fill the strategic plan with theory and abstraction. Strategy must be translated into daily actionable goals and plans. That's the whole purpose for doing this. So there's some, so, you know, if you read about strategic planning, um, some, some theories break it down into seven elements. Some say they're 10 points. Some say they're 15. But basically, um, to keep it simple at this point and to keep it user friendly, I'm going with the seven elements of a strategic plan. And those are mission statement, vision statement, your core values a SWOT analysis, outlining your long-term goals, breaking it into your yearly objectives, and coming up with your action plan. And again, excuse me, I have a little bit of a cold. <clears throat> I have to have a little water here. Um, if you're not ready for a strategic plan, if you've still got um, uh, differing points of view, you don't necessarily have a mission statement, vision statement, core values, which is OK. It's really OK. Um, this is a process, an important process. You need to start somewhere. And in that case, you start with your yearly objectives, a one-year plan with an action plan. And, and the first thing may be to have a board and staff retreat to develop a mission, vision statement and core values. That's OK. Uh, one thing I do want to point out is if you um, go through the club certification materials and process, um, you will, sorry, I'm just trying to get caught up with myself here. You will uh, go through a lot of this exercise and you'll, you'll do a self-assessment of where you are on these things. And essentially, whether you're going through the certification process at a bronze, silver, gold level, or just going through the materials to assess your readiness, you will come out of that process with a SWOT analysis. Um, it's absolutely inevitable. So uh, that's one good way to approach this. So assuming you're going down the path of the strategic plan, whether it's going to be a short or a long-term strategic plan, the first thing you're going to want to do is define or review your mission, vision, and values. And um, it's pretty clear. It's pretty simple. Uh, it's something that you, an organization or a club will usually do once for a very long period of time until there are dramatic organizational or environmental changes that um, necessitate, necessitate revisiting these things. Um, I had the privilege and the hard work of taking a, a fairly large club through a revision of mission, vision, and values as part of a strategic planning process. And um, it was very exciting and also a lot of work. It really helps to have a facilitator, um, somebody external that can help your board and staff either together or separately um, brainstorm and come up with ideas and then, then uh, vet them through a, a combined process. Um, because it, it become, people become emotional and passionate. And in our world, there is a lot of passion. So. You want to make sure that that's um, harnessed, corralled, personalities don't get involved, egos don't get involved, people's toes don't get stepped on. So um, hiring an outside facilitator is not a bad idea. Uh, we can also help with that from our end. If that's something that you're interested in, we do have, as I said, a group of club consultants that are at your disposal to help with that process. 
So just in case um, there's any confusion about exactly what mission, vision, and values are, um, the mission is the stated purpose for your organization's existence. It really describes what you do today. For example, USSA's mission is lead, encourage, and support athletes in achieving excellence by empowering national teams, clubs, coaches, parents, officials, volunteers, and fans. So essentially, we exist as a nationally governing body with a mission to support athlete development because we're an athlete-centered industry in achieving excellence by empowering our teams, you, all clubs, coaches, parents, officials, volunteers, and fans. Pretty broad mission statement, but that explains what we do. That's why we're here. A vision is really an aspirational statement of where you want to be in the future. I often tell um, clubs that are trying to come up with a vision statement to think of a newspaper headline about your club in five years or 10 years, or if you really want to look out there 15 years, what's that newspaper article going to say about you? Um, it's, it's a visionary article. It may be um, if your mission like ours is, is to um, support athlete development, then your vision could be, um, well, for our vision, I'll share it with you, is to make the United States of America the best in the world in Olympic skiing and snowboarding. As a club, your vision may be to, um, that you have helped, you've made a mission impact that has helped X number of student athletes uh, reach their goals as they have independently defined them, whether that goal is to ski for college, to make the national team, to become a coach, um, or to just improve their, their skiing and competition skills. Um, that newspaper article will say, you did it. You're there, you are making a difference, and you are um, achieve, your athletes are achieving those successes. Um, and then values are the beliefs or principles that guide the organization. They're shared by the board and staff, strongly held, and not easily changed. We use values as our compass here for everything from making planning decisions to budget decisions to um, marketing plans, to putting together our club excellence conference, everything that we do, we check against our values. Are they in alignment with what we believe, what our core beliefs are in here? Um, and we share them with a lot of clubs and we ask clubs through many different processes and forums, are your values in alignment with USSA's values? Because as a member club, we feel it's important that we're in alignment. USSA actually did just take an exercise, go through an exercise um, a little over a year ago in reviewing and redefining mission, vision, and values. I think the ones that were there previously had been in place for maybe 20 years, um, and it's a changing world and dynamic world. So um, when I came on board, we had all new values. They are integrity, passion, fun, team, community, excellence, and grit. Your club may have different words, different terms, different values, but I'd be really surprised if as a community of USSA and all of our member clubs, we didn't agree on that, that um, all of us need to operate with integrity. We clearly operate with passion. We have to have fun. Why would we do it otherwise? It's about the team. It's not about an individual. It takes a team for an individual, individual to be successful. It's about community. We don't operate in a void. You don't operate in a void. We strive for excellence. And excellence, as I said before, can mean different things to different people. It doesn't have to mean being an Olympic skier. It can mean you become a really well-educated um, athlete that is set up to achieve your lifetime goals and be a very important contributing member of your community. And lastly, as I said, it's grit. Uh, it, it takes grit to get to where we all want to be, whether it's um, developing a strategic plan for a club or helping an athlete overcome adversary and injury. All right, so if you've gone through your mission, vision, and values, um, you have come to agreement as a team of board and staff of what they are, your next step is going to be to do what I call an environmental scan. 
and it is a SWOT analysis. And again, I can't um, state enough how much the materials that are there for uh, club self-assessment through the certification process will is an exercise to get you to a SWOT analysis. It's lengthy. There are 145 standards. But if you can divide and conquer and go through them as a team and rate yourself on a scale of one to five, it'll be very clear what your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats are. Um, this is an opportunity to figure out where you are now and generate ideas on what you need to focus on. It should be reviewed annually. It should be part of your end of the year process to make updates and changes to it. Um, and another thing to think about when you look at this is strengths and weaknesses are generally internal and opportunities and threats are basically external influence. So your strengths are what, what do you do well or the advantage of your organization? What contributes to your success? Um, do you have a really strong leadership team? Do you have a lot of highly certified coaches? Do you have a group of um, dynamic athletes? Do you have a very diverse board of directors? Do you have strong funding? This could be um, you don't have a clear process to set goals and evaluate staff. Uh, so therefore, expectations may be different and not clear. Um, you may have had uh, trouble raising funding for scholarships, and therefore your recruiting is um, a challenge because you are in an area where you want to bring on board um, athletes that may not have the financial needs to pay and would like to be able to offer scholarships. So those are all internal strengths and weaknesses that you want to list and get as much input as you can. Um, I have a, uh, I'm working with one club through a strategic planning process right now and their SWOT analysis and I have simple five question survey that I sent out um, that to share, I shared with them to send that to their stakeholders. And it's essentially um, what is, you know, use five words to describe your club. Uh, identify what you club does well and where the club can improve and given what you know about the state of the industry um, in our case the winter sports competition industry uh, where do you see what do you see the trends as being and then lastly uh, where do you see this club in 10 years um, and from that information you plug that into your SWOT analysis along with um, other input from staff and board and you may find immediately the vision statement comes right out of that because you're saying, wow, I really like where these people see us being in 10 years. So again, um, moving over to the external opportunities are external factors that may contribute to organization and can build up your strengths. Opportunities may be um, the, your resort is open to the idea of adding snowmaking to your venue or increasing your snowmaking resources to your venue. That's a great opportunity. Um, another one might be your community has a, a community fund that's looking to support athletic scholarships for local nonprofits. That could be another great opportunity. Um, another one might be another club has approached you about combining resources to run a summer camp. It could be just run the gamut, uh, just get it all down on paper. And then threats are potential problems, risks caused by external factors that your organization may face. Well, there's always the environmental threat. I mean, everybody could put that down. We're worried about sporadic winters and snowfall and how that impacts our training and competition schedules. It could be a down economy, hopefully not, but um, some areas of the country are still struggling, like uh, New Mexico, for example, is really having a tough time. Um, they just uh, apparently cut their Division I Alpine and cross country teams. So that could be a threat. So get, get those all down on paper and move toward identifying your issues and once you have that SWOT analysis it's going to be pretty obvious to you what your issues are and what goals will emerge from that analysis and then as a group um, one thing I didn't mention that I wanted to is is often a good idea to have a strategic planning committee uh, it can be on the same page and you collect everybody's feedback and input um, it can be 
a little bit challenging, especially time wise to get everybody on board for some of the planning meetings that you'll need to have. So you can form a planning committee that's comprised of a couple key board members, executive leadership, um, possibly an athletic director, program director, could include a volunteer, could include, um, can really be made up of anybody that you want, but you want to make sure you've got representation of all the different stakeholders in that committee. And that committee can drill down and really go through the strategic issues and goals and start to prioritize them. Um, the issues and goals will usually come from strengths to build on and weaknesses to be strengthened, opportunities to be taken and threats to be avoided. So go through each issue, determine if it's important or urgent. Um, sometimes they seem really important when they're only urgent. And this is a good thing to do even if you're just doing an annual plan. If, if you're one of those clubs that's in a situation of going through a lot of changes, not everybody's on the same page, you need to really understand what's important and urgent. Um, and you may be in a situation where you're just going to have to deal with some of those urgent things right away. For example, um, you can't all get on the same page and agree, yet you're, it's, it's the end of April now and you've got to give your coaches some idea of whether they're going to be asked to return next year. That's an urgent issue, um, not necessarily a situation you ever want to be in, um, but you're there, so you're just going to have to deal with it. Um, I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything on this slide. So when you want to come out of this um, review of your strategic issues and goals with basically three to five issues, you want them to be pretty broad. You want them to be something that you can do something about. Um, be careful not to ignore current major issues in the interest of pursuing more creative and forward-looking goals. You know, there's always going to be a mix of big thinkers and then practical people. Uh, just make sure everybody's voice is being heard and that you're really keeping practical things in front of you because this is a practical plan. Make sure your issues are clearly articulated so that someone outside the organization could understand the description because if they can't, then you're going to have a tough time communicating it to all your stakeholders. Um, and then you're going to be able to use these issues to identify goals. So, okay. so what do these goals look like? Well, you're going to have long-term goals, and those are the three to five statements that we talked about. You're going to drill down to a level below the vision and plan how you are going to achieve your vision. And from there, you're going to go into your yearly objective. So you have a strategic plan, which is typically going to be three to five years. But you have to roll up under that an operating plan that's your, that, that is guiding you, that um, fits the criteria of being smart, which is specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. Um, because if not, they're just ideas that are out there that you can't track on how you're doing against them. So make sure your goals are smart. And um, sorry, just getting ahead of myself here. And um, <clears throat> clearly defined. And they are going to be your basis for your action plan. So your action plan is really, really the tactics. It's, it's an outline of your tactics that we're going to roll into individual staff members' annual plans, where they're going to go drill down right into their tasks. And at the end of the year, you're going to be able to say, OK, did we achieve that? Did we not achieve that? And you can use that as an assessment process for individual staff members, for teams within your staff, as well as your overall organizational performance. So every one of those three to five objectives that you come up with, um, goals, objectives, should have a plan that details how it's going to be achieved. So that's where you break it down into the detail uh, per goal, per individual. So essentially, a vision without a plan is just a dream. And we all have lots of dreams. And we all have lots of clubs out there that are still operating on those dreams and haven't really gotten down to um, an effective and efficient way to, and a sustainable, more importantly, way to um, manage the future of their club. The vision without a plan, a vision, 
A vision without a plan is just a dream. A plan without a vision is just drudgery. But a vision with a plan can change the world. It's going to help you reach your goals and make the greatest impact, um, in, mission impact possible, as well as strive for that excellence. Be the very best that you can be. And circling back, that's, that's why we're here. That's what we do as a club development program. We work with our clubs on continuous improvement, whether you pursue certification process, you are trying to hit the reset button and develop an annual plan that's going to get you through some times of difficulty, or whether you're ready to ha have a planning retreat and get the ball rolling on your first five-year plan. Um, that's what's going to help you continual, continually improve. Um, so we covered an awful lot of material in a very short amount of time. I'd certainly like to know if there are any questions. Uh, we do have a lot of resources also on our website that can back up and support um, a lot of these, uh, a lot of the planning processes and steps that you will go through um, as a club. So any questions? Be quiet out there. Okay, well, feel free to reach out to me, um, Ellen Adams. My email address is eadams at ussa.org. With any following questions or concerns that you have, any feedback on the webinar, uh, always open to that, always trying to make it as meaningful and um, useful for clubs as possible. And we're also looking at other ways to communicate some of these messages. We're looking at potentially podcasts in the future. We're looking at doing regional workshops where we can have face to face time and have breakout sessions and workshops on things like strategic planning. Uh, so always open to your feedback. I hope you can join us at the Club Excellence Conference. We're going to have some great speakers. We will have Seal Foltz, who was 20 years president of the Vail Valley Foundation, doing a session on strategic planning as well. So uh, please take a look at that and join us if you uh, can. And other than that, I just want to thank you so much for joining me. And I look forward to meeting you in person. Take care and enjoy the rest of the winter.